the day that God woke me up, I was plotting my death, plotting suicide. I was laying in bed, and I, I had planned to take my life. I was just done. I was just done with life. Like, and people don't understand depression. It's demonic. It's demonic. There was no reason for me to ever want to take my life. Now that I'm saved, now that I have the Lord, now that I have the Spirit of God living within me, I know that there was no reason for that. That is nothing. There's no explanation for depression. It's demonic. Take what you want out of that. Hate me if you want. I don't care. Jesus said they hated me first. It's demonic. And I was about to take my life. And I was so mad with everything going on. And so one of the things that I used to do when I was upset is I would call my sisters and I would vent. Talk about people behind their back. Gossip and laugh. Right? And I called my sister and I'm like, blah, 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 on the phone. And she's like, hey, uh, Emily, um, I actually can't talk about this right now with you. And I'm like, so frustrated, beyond frustrated. Because she didn't know that I was I was going to end it all, right? And she's like, I'm actually on, she's like, well, I want to talk with you about this, but I just can't talk about it right now because I'm actually on a prayer call right now. And it's a three-way call. And there was um, three ladies on the phone. Yeah, so there was my sister Jennifer, my sister um, Jessica, and then there was Juliana, our friend. And they were all on the phone for a prayer chat, prayer call. I guess they got on the phone every morning and they would pray together. But anyway... She's like, but you can pray with us if you want. And I'm like, I don't want to pray. Like, this is ridiculous. But okay, like, I didn't want to be rude. So we were all going through our prayers. And then I was just, it was my turn to pray. And I'm like, I can't even, I'm like trying to talk, but my lips were just so shut. My brain was confused. I couldn't even pray. I couldn't even say anything. I couldn't pray. And I was like, uh, 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 like trying to talk. Like straight up demonized girl I was being demonized for a long 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 time and looking back at that moment I know that there was and that I needed to be delivered but my sister stopped me she's like just wait hold on one second she's like heavenly father I just pray that you would bind up the spirit of confusion in my sister Emily right now in Yeshua's name amen and I just get chills thinking about that day I felt something I felt something. I actually felt the Lord's presence for the first time in a really long time. And uh, I just started praying and like prayer was coming out of me and it was a real prayer. And uh, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget that moment. And was a little girl um, about one years old my parents divorced um, and that was really hard on me I mean that I, divorce is hard on everyone I'm sure you have you know a lot of people who are watching this video they know exactly what I'm talking about here um, and you know it didn't I didn't even realize that my parents had divorced until I was like seven years old and I'll never forget the moment that I realized I was sitting there in my house um, we lived in Pembroke I grew up in by the way I grew up in Calgary Alberta and we lived in Pembroke for most of my life or Forest Lawn um, but yeah I was just sitting there in our living room and I remember thinking to myself where's my dad like what the heck where is he and <laughs> um, my mom explained everything to me and that was when I realized that you know they had been divorced and crazy that it just came to my head at seven years old but anyway so then she called him up on the phone and I talked to him and so yeah there was that um divorce the divorce had always affected me I think it affected me more now I don't want to be selfish um here but in my mind growing up and it, maybe it affected my sisters more or maybe it affected them the same but for me it affected me so much because I was only one years old like they were older kids they were like teenagers so when my parents divorced, they had a relationship with my dad. They had a relationship. Obviously, I always had a relationship with my mom, but they had 
a really awesome relationship with my dad and memories. And so maybe that would have made it harder for them now that I'm thinking about it and saying it out loud. <laughs> um, but for me, it was hard because my dad remarried and he had two other children who I love to death, my brother and sister. And so in his, in the chaos and, and knowing how chaotic it is as a mom and as a parent, I understand looking back that it, it this could have caused that. But he was so busy, you know, raising those two children that he forgot about me. Like I was there for all of the visits, but I was just like this invisible child running around um, through the visits. Like I, I never got to have that uh, relationship with my dad. My sisters had the relationship and my little brother and sister, they got to have an awesome relationship. But I didn't really, I wasn't paid attention to it. My dad didn't get to know me. Um, and so that was really hard growing up and quite traumatic. I didn't have that dad figure. I think that's where a lot of my issues came from. Um, so I think it was about 16 years old and my stepmom, she was super mean to me when I was growing up. So again, when if you come up in this video and you're watching and you know who I'm talking about, please just keep in mind, I've forgiven everybody, but this stuff that I'm telling is completely crucial for my testimony. It absolutely matters. It's very important and it needs to be shared um, because I know that there, I'm not the only one who's struggled with these types of traumas and these types of situations growing up. And uh, so yeah, she was really mean to me. She would call me names like fat. Um, she would comment whenever I ate, like I was just a kid eating calories. I used to be so hyper, running around playing, burning tons of calories. And honestly, like now that I have four kids, I know that it's normal. So kids come in all different shapes and sizes. They all eat a lot. like. Food just does not exist in our fridge or our cupboards for very long. <laughs> Children have appetites. And so I was, it was commented to me every single time. And so that really, really, really affected me. I think that curse lived, that curse stuck with me for a long time. Um, and yeah, so there was that. Um, but anyway, so I was about between 14 and 16. I can't remember. I'm pretty, like my memories, tell me that I think I was 14, um, 14 or 15 years old. And I just remember sitting outside playing on my guitar and I remember sitting there and my dad came outside and he's like, wow, like I just realized that we have 15 or so years of a wasted relationship and I am so sorry. And when my dad said that to me, it was exactly what my heart needed. And ever since then we've had a great relationship. And even when I was a kid, like through the trauma and through like not, um, having him pay much attention to me other than, you know, freaking out because it was messy or freaking out because um, we were screaming and running around and playing with the lights and all that stuff. I remember my dad was just like, ah, get down from there. Ah, turn that off. Ah, clean this up all the time. Um, so those were the kind of memories I had. But also aside from that, he was such a funny guy and he had the best stories. So I'll always remember those too. But that just wasn't enough. And when he came out there and he told me, um, and he admitted to me that he felt bad, like he didn't even know what my favorite thing to do was. And anyone who knows me knows that I love to sing. Everybody knows that. And he didn't know that about me. He didn't know I wrote music. He didn't know that I loved to sing. He didn't know anything. He didn't know my favorite color, nothing. So <sighs> since then our relationship's been really awesome. Um, and that's, there's that. That's been really awesome. Um, but so, okay, moving on. So I was involved with a boy from the age of, I wanna say like 12 years old, on and off, all the way up till like 16, 17 years old. And this boy was extremely sexually active and always pressuring me to lose my virginity to him. And it's something that I didn't wanna do. And so he ended up actually, he had a lot of childhood trauma too and he ended up um, cheating on me a lot. Like, and I'm not talking about, oh, he talked to another girl, he kissed another girl. No, this little, this boy who was two years older than me or a year older than me or so was sexually active. And he, what, he actually um, wound up having a sex addiction growing up. So that, I was always heartbroken from that. We were break, like he was my first 
what you would think was your love, which now that I'm an adult and I'm married to the love of my life, I know that that's just not the truth. Um, but so there was trauma from that, and then I had different boyfriends, different boyfriends, and eventually the heartbreak from him betraying me like that. I ended up losing my virginity at that point because I thought that that would be a way to make him, you know, stop cheating on me constantly, um, which I learned that, that that just, first of all, was a horrible mistake, and it didn't do anything. That's all it did was um, it just ruined me and ruined my life. Uh, while he still had this sex addiction and still continued to cheat constantly. Um, also, he was an atheist. I want to point that out. He was absolutely against Jesus. And I grew up in a Christian family. My dad was a Christian. My mom was a Christian. My aunties and uncles were Christian. We went to church every Sunday. We went to youth group. I was involved in children's ministry. Um, but I was also very lost. And um, we lived in kind of a bad area of the city. I had a lot of really bad friends, um, people that I love, but in, if you really think about it, they were all drinking, they were doing ecstasy, they were doing drugs at a very young age. And so I was either at church or I was stoned on like marijuana or drinking with my friends at a young age and making out with boys, doing stuff that I should not have been doing, hanging out in places I should not have been sneaking out the window, like, honestly, I, I'm surprised I'm here today. And that's what I mean by when I look back, God was always there protecting me. And now that I know his heart and I know his love for me, I can feel his presence just thinking through all my memories that he was there. But anyway, so this boy was super against my beliefs and I was always trying to like evangelize to him with my sister. And uh, we watched those left behind uh, movies with him one day and like we fell apart we never talked uh years later he contacted me down the road and actually told me that he gave his life to the lord and he even showed me a necklace of the fish that it was a wooden necklace that said what would jesus do in the middle and it was a fish we gave it to him he still had it completely worn out the words were faded the paint the garnish everything was just faded on it but he still had it and he gave his life to the lord and even despite all of his struggles in his life that he goes through right now, he knows that he has Jesus and that's the most important thing. And I, I believe that we planted seeds in him and, and I'm so grateful for that. Like there is nothing better, if you're a believer, there is nothing better than knowing that someone is saved. Whether they're your friend, your enemy, whatever, that they're saved. So that was really cool. And uh, that trauma that I went through, the hurt that I went through in that relationship, I just passed that on. Like, I had lots of different boyfriends growing up. I remember the sweetest boyfriend I had when I was a kid. I met him through the church and like, I hurt that boy so badly. And I'll, you know, I, I, I think about it, like, I just wish I could take it back, the things that I did and um, the way I treated him. and. I wish I could take back um, the things that I did that affected his life, and I'm sure they did. Um, you know, I was just rotten. I was rotten. And I, if you ever watch this video, you know who, you know who you are, and I'm sorry. And I hope that you'll forgive me for that too. Um, but that trauma just carried on, and I hurt a lot of people, and I had a lot of relationships and a lot of sexual activity with uh, different boys growing up and I guess on top of that um, I had like I was just like in so many abusive relationships like there was always physical abuse there was emotional abuse sexual abuse um, mal like every boyfriend that I had there was always abuse and uh, a lot of uh, trauma um, especially with my daughter's dad too like, there was a lot there that was, he was a crackhead and he was in and out of jail all the time and like the three years we were together it was just chasing him around the streets trying to get him to do the right thing and he never did um, <clears throat> that stuff sticks with you right that's why we shouldn't it's why god designed the perfect design was marriage one man one wife you get married you don't you're not doing sexual activity and um, 
you're just you're not uh, committing adultery at a young age and stuff like that like adultery is any kind of sexual sin that that's meant for a marriage for a husband and wife and we actually create soul ties when we do that right we have these soul ties to these people throughout our life that um that we have had sexual relations with and it carries on and it curses and it's just it's not good um so i'm very sorry for that another thing that i struggled with a lot throughout my childhood was depression bad depression i wanted to kill myself every other day every other week like it was it was really bad and um i used to cut and all that stuff um even when i was in church even when i was in youth group even when i was in children's ministry teaching kids about jesus i was just a very double-minded person at that point in my life um anyway i was super double-minded and and then um you know, I also had family members that my mom kind of took in growing up and they were into hard drugs. My sisters, they took care of me most of the time because my mom worked three jobs, so she was barely around. Um, I remember my sisters raising me for the most part. Um, and, you know, I'd be like sneaking home from school, skipping school, smoking weed in the house with all my friends. And then my cousin would just crawl through the window and put a knife to my throat because she was strung out on crack. And like, I had to fight for my life, most of my life, whether it was my sisters beating on me or my cousins or just at school in the, in the neighborhood we lived in, everything. So it was really hard to lead a Christian life with this, the stuff going on around me in my life. Um, but I was the first person being stoned as a kite talking about Jesus and you got to, you know, the rapture is going to happen one day. And, and a lot of the stuff I won't deny that I talked about when I, in those moments has actually come to pass already. And I'm surprised that a lot of the people that I had those conversations with aren't like, wow, like Emily was right. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but so that's a little bit of backstory of my childhood. And obviously there's a lot more trauma. There's a lot more things that I could get into, but I want to get into the good part. So I met um, my husband, we've been together for 10 years and our marriage, our, our marriage has only been for three years now. Our relationship was really rocky. We struggled with a lot of um, alcohol abuse throughout it and um, other things that went on. Um, and, you know, we have four kids together out of wedlock. Like we were not married, we had four kids. And by this point in my life, like I would say, Five years into our relationship, I had given away my faith. I didn't, I was like, how could God, how could there be a God and let all of these things happen in my life, all of these things around me, like how could there be a God and I don't even know if there is a God and I had lost my cousin Karina, the one that I was talking about, about the knife to the throat. Um, as we got older, we were like thick as thieves, me and her, we were, the, she was so funny and like when she wasn't high, like the best, I have so many good memories with her. I love her so much and she loved Jesus, but she took her life and shortly after she took her life, um, my stepdad that I had growing up, my mom, she was going to marry him. He was a, a pretty big figure in my life too. Um, he passed away and so I've been dealing with all this stuff. Um, me and my husband, my now, like me and my husband, we had split up at that time for a while. So I've been going through a lot and at this point I didn't even believe that there was a God anymore. I was completely lost. I had picked up like new agey, witchcrafty things in my life without even knowing it, pagan things, like just not knowing it. And I was spiritual and things had changed a lot um, from who I was growing up as a kid. And, and just, I had so much fear and anxiety and paranoia that had attached itself to me, the spirit of fear and and the spirit of um, anxiety and depression and, and paranoia was was the worst. Um, I could not even sleep. I had to call, there was times, and I people can honestly vouch for this, um, that I would have to call my sister and just say, I think I'm gonna die. Like, I need you to like, I, I, I might go to sleep and I might die. Like, I need you to come here and, and just, just sit with me till I fall asleep, right? Um, it was unreal. And I dealt with a lot of this, even in the times where people wouldn't have even known that I was dealing with that. 
throughout my childhood and throughout my um, adulthood and the day that you know me and Cody obviously we got back together I love him so much and I would never I would never give that man up for the world like he is the most amazing thing that has happened to me in my life apart from the Lord and um, you know there was a lot more that I dealt with too like I lost my daughter for a while there and I couldn't get her back and if it wasn't for Cody stepping in and just saying like hey you know what I'm gonna help you I wouldn't have her so I give that to, you know I give that to him I was I was a bar star I was hanging out at the bar I was living with my mom my mom had custody of my daughter it was just a crazy like stupid 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 after one thing after another and I'm not going to take all of the blame because I know that there's a lot of people who had things against me that did things against me as well. But I do take my portion of the blame and I'm so sorry for the things that I put people through. Um, but so 10, about eight years into our marriage, I started babysitting my niece and my sister was, my sisters were both really, um, strong in their faith and I was babysitting my niece and I had my other sister around a lot we were homeschooling our kids because of COVID and all of the weird conspiracy and all the stuff happening in the world and honestly still believe a lot of that is happening in the schools and <clears throat> if I could homeschool that's what I would be doing but we'll get into that later um I don't want to miss anything in this my uh niece was over and we were like watching a Disney movie she's like that's demonic and then we were like doing this and that or whatever we were doing as a family. It's like, that's demonic, that's satanic, that's pagan. And I'm like, holy moly. <clears throat> I'm like getting so frustrated. I'm like, okay, hey, like everything's evil. I get it, right? And I'm freaking out. Like I loved Halloween. I loved dressing up and I used to make my own costumes. I just loved taking the kids out. I would dress them in scary stuff. Like I loved Halloween. Um, and I also loved Christmas. We had a family uh, tradition every every Christmas where we had this Charlie Brown tree that was just ghetto. And we would buy the green tree-like garland and we would wrap it to make it look like it was a full and lush and beautiful tree. And that would take hours. And it was just our family tradition, right? <clears throat> but anyways, having somebody come into my life and telling me that those things are pagan, that they're not of God, uh, December 25th isn't Jesus' birthday and God is against us celebrating pagan holidays. These things made me mad. They made me upset, deeply troubled me. Um, it was it was heartbreaking. It was grievous, grievous because that it is completely true what the Bible says that children will lead us. Um, just, I, if it wasn't for my niece, I don't know if I'd be saved. Um, conviction hurts it is it's not a comfortable feeling like if you're feeling upset at my video or the post i post on facebook consider that it's not me it's you and you need to seek god in it because conviction is uncomfortable and you know god breaks us before he blesses us um and i was i was broken at that point knowing all the things that i thought i knew were not true because when I finally did something, there's something I finally did. It was called opening up the Bible and reading it for myself. Because remember, I said I went to church every Sunday. I was taught that Christmas was about Jesus, even though we forgot about Jesus. And eventually throughout my life, it was just about the presents and the Christmas tree and the decorations and blah, 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 blah. Right? But I was taught one thing and led one way and it was mostly by my peers it was by the adults in my life it was by my pastor growing up it was by my youth leaders like it was by all the people around me i was taught this way and turns out there's only one way and it's jesus and jesus is god made flesh and yeah the law has changed but there's a lot of things that, are, that have not changed god's word will never change and he says Thou shalt not make for yourself an idol. So I, and I mean, there's millions. It's not even a question of whether it's okay to put up a Christmas tree or it's okay to have these Christmas decorations 
or to take part in these pay it's not even a question easter all of it it's all pagan all of it um but i didn't know any of that and i was really upset when someone told me all of that and it wasn't until i actually picked up my bible and read it that i realized it for myself and i think that at that point <clears throat> i was just completely torn apart because i was like i want to honor god i want to follow god but i'm living in sin that i can't not i can't unlive like I can be forgiven for every single thing I've done, right? I can be forgiven for all of the bad things I've done in my life. But I can't be forgiven until I change my ways. And I can't change my ways because I'm, I'm not married and I have four children and me and my husband are sleeping together. He's my husband now, but he wasn't at the time, right? And that was the biggest thing was like, I'm not married. And so if the rapture happened tomorrow, <clears throat> I'm, I'm deliberately living in sin now. Because there's a difference between making mistakes and sinning because we're all sinful. We can't, we can't completely be sin free. Like we can try our hardest, but we will always fall short of the glory of God. And the thing is, there's a difference between unintentional sin and intentional sin. And at this point it's intentional. Um, so I came to my husband and like I came to Cody and I told him, how I felt about it and and I and that I gave myself back to the Lord and he was like he wasn't happy about that part but he was like you know what yes I'll marry you and he should have done it a long time ago anyway because we love each other right but so we got married we had a beautiful wedding and this was in months of me realizing all of this stuff um re starting to read my bible out of nowhere um I realized that sabbath isn't sunday that's a lie <laughs> and I'm sorry but we're human beings. We don't have the the uh, authority, the God-given authority to change the Sabbath day. We don't have the God-given authority to do certain things that we've done. And so um, I started doing Sabbath on Saturday with a group of uh, like-minded people. Um, and at this point, my husband had thought I'd joined a cult. And so in his mind, he's like, we need to get out of here. We're moving. And in my mind, he was just doing one hurtful thing after another um, through his past addictions. And I was like, we're leaving. We need to get out of here. So I'm like trying to save him. And he's trying to save me from Jesus. Like he didn't want me to follow Jesus at all, right? So he moved me out to uh, Saskatchewan <laughs> thinking, ha ha ha, you know, I'm taking her away from the Lord. But what he actually did is he brought me to a place where I was secluded and all by myself. And my relationship with God has only grown. My understanding has only grown. Um, and so there has been a lot of trials and tribulation throughout our marriage. Um, we deeply love each other and we will we'll always love each other. We'll always be together one flesh. But it is hard. It is hard to face per persecution by the one you love constantly. And it's just hard. And if I can give one piece of advice to someone, just don't be unequally yoked. You don't want to deal with this. It's not worth it. Before you ever decide to be in a relationship, get married. And get married to a believer if you're a believer because you will save that person heartache and you will save yourself heartache. Um, and I don't mean any of that as a bad thing against my husband. It's not like that. And I wish that people would, and you know, as I said in my prayer in the beginning, the devil will try to steal our testimony. So there's gonna be people who watch this video who get deeply offended by me. There's gonna be people who watch this video who, who all they're gonna hear is that I'm, I'm stabbing, taking stabs at them. Um, he wants to do nothing but steal my testimony. He wants to steal my marriage. He wants, God wishes that none should depart from, like no one should divorce. He does not want divorce, okay? Um, so every second I, every corner I turn, the devil is out to take my marriage. And that's what I'm fighting. I'm not fighting Cody. I'm fighting spiritual forces. It's not flesh and blood. This is not my husband that I fight when we have these arguments. I know that, okay? But we're, we have different separate beliefs. So it makes it really hard. Um, 
but also he's become a lot more accepting. He has been more than amazing in so many different things, and I, I give him so much thanks for that. Um, but the devil will try to steal my testimony. But anyway, so a little bit more to my testimony. Let me get to the good juicy part. So the day that God woke me up, I was plotting my death, plotting suicide. I was laying in bed and I, I had planned to take my life. I was just done. I was just done with life. Like, and people don't understand depression. It's demonic. It's demonic. There was no reason for me to ever want to take my life. Now that I'm saved, now that I have the Lord, now that I have the Spirit of God living within me, I know that there was no reason that that is not, there's no explanation for depression. It's demonic. Take what you want out of that. Hate me if you want. I don't care. Jesus said they hated me first. It's demonic. And I was about to take my life and I was so mad with everything going on. And one of the things that I used to do, hold on, coffee break. So one of the things that I used to do when I was upset is I would call my sisters and I would vent and talk about people behind their back, gossip and blah, right? And I called my sister and I'm like, blah, 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 on the phone. And she's like, hey, uh, Emily, um, I actually can't talk about this right now with you. And I'm like, so frustrated, beyond frustrated. Because she didn't know that I was, I was going to end it all, right? And she's like, I'm actually on, she's like, well, I want to talk with you about this, but I just can't talk about it right now because I'm actually on a prayer call right now. <laughs> and it's a three-way call. And there was... Um, three ladies on the phone yeah so there was my sister Jennifer my sister um, Jessica and then there was Juliana our friend and they were all on the phone for a prayer chat prayer call I guess they got on the phone every morning and they would pray together and I miss those days we need to start doing that again ladies but anyway she's like but you can pray with us if you want and I'm like I don't want to pray like this is ridiculous but okay like I didn't want to be rude so we were all going through our prayers and then I was just, it was my turn to pray. And I'm like, I can't even, I'm like trying to talk, but my lips were just so shut. My brain was confused. I couldn't even pray. I couldn't even say any, I couldn't pray. And I was like, uh, the, uh, uh, like trying to talk like straight up demonized girl. I was being demonized for a long, long, long time. And looking back at that moment, I know that there was and that I needed to be delivered, but my sister stopped me. She's like, just wait, hold on one second. She's like, Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would bind up the spirit of confusion in my sister Emily right now in Yeshua's name. Amen. And I just get chills thinking about that day. I felt something. I felt something. I actually felt the Lord's presence for the first time in a really long time. And I just started praying and like, prayer was coming out of me and it was a real prayer and uh I'll never forget it I'll never forget that moment and ever since then I just automatically I opened my bible to the truth of all those things that I said that were being told to me around me and I started fasting and within like three weeks my husband proposed to me and we were getting married in two months and I was finally walking with the Lord and not in sin anymore and my life has changed like you guys i've literally i've heard the voice of the lord speaking to me or the holy spirit speaking to me like the house we're living in right now you might notice in my videos that they're like super like my house is really ugly this house was abandoned for eight years before we moved into it we had been searching for a home out here in saskatchewan for almost a year and that one day i had we had given up and we were renting, but we found out that the guy who was renting to us was moving back and, and he needed his house back. So we were going to yet again have to try and find something else. And the fear of going back to Calgary was just like, it was unreal. And I remember I was reading a book and I, the book is, I think, downstairs. So I can't show you guys it right now, but it's called How to Listen to God. 
And I never forget this moment. I gotta tell you guys, this, this is also part of my testimony. But I was sitting there in the porch in this house we were living in and <clears throat> the, the book was called How to Listen to God and I had called every single abandoned house here, every single homeowner, every single rental, nothing. Some of these abandoned houses sit here and they just rot. And then there was this one last number and it's the house we're in right now. It was on the whiteboard. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? I give up. And I was just reading this book, crying and praying in the porch. And I was looking outside. And I remember thinking, I did a prayer and I was praying. And, and then I looked across the street and I seen this dip in the sidewalk. And I was like, wow, like, someone is really going to hurt themselves on that sidewalk. But I remember it. Before I heard that, I heard it. Before I said that, I heard a voice. And it said, call that number call that number and I was like man someone is really gonna hurt themselves on that side wait whoa what call that number and then I looked down and in my hand there's a book and it says how to listen to God and I was like okay all right like I remember saying okay to myself I was like okay so I stood up and I walked through the house past Cody like a zombie and he was like staring at me like what is she doing and I beep, 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 beep on my phone, picked it up, called the lady. We were in this house within a week. We were in this house within a week, an abandoned home. They gave us a deal, like an awesome steal of a deal. Um, and just the way it all worked out was so surreal. And I remember the days leading up, it was like a week, the days leading up to us moving into this house. Cody would say, well, if we do, if it works out, if, and I'm like, it is going to, the Lord literally told me, like, people don't believe us. They don't believe us. Like, they're like, there's no God. Dude, I don't have voices in my head that randomly give me blessings. Like, there is a God, and he, if you listen, if you talk to him, if you have a relationship with him, if you ask him into your heart, he will guide you and lead you and he will talk to you and he will teach you and it is the most amazing relationship you'll ever enter in your life everything will change addiction depression anxiety paranoia gone in the name of jesus gone he has healed me completely of body pain and ailment like jesus heals okay it might not happen like that because you got to remember what does the word of god say the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Everything happens in God's timing. His ways are above our ways. His understanding is above our understanding. Okay? He, his timing is perfect for everything. So just give him a chance. Like, open up your heart to him. If you're looking for that one thing, that one thing, if you're looking for your life to change, for you to change, for everything to change, it is in God. It is through God. That is it. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Nobody gets to the Father except through him. So when you accept Jesus into your heart, everything changes. And the things that I've learned to this day are just completely unreal and out of this world. Um, but I will say that um, the blessings didn't stop there. The the voice, that still small voice didn't stop there. It never does. And sometimes God is silent. Sometimes God tells us, not yet, wait. We pray for something and he says, not yet, wait. You know what I mean? And when it does happen, it is better than we could have ever imagined. It is more spectacular and amazing than we could have ever hoped for. He really does provide for his children. And, and I'm not kidding you when I say I've seen people who who were prostitutes, I've seen people who were drug addicts, I've seen people who were um, raped every single day as a child until they were an adult or until a, they were a young teenager come to the Lord and their life has changed. He takes everything. He makes you brand new. The day that I was born again, it was like seeing through the eyes of a baby. Everything was new. Everything was new to me. I walked outside. It looked like the, the first time I ever seen a butterfly. It was like the first time I've ever seen a butterfly when I saw a butterfly pass by me. It was the first time I ever seen the trees move and the, and the, the wind blow, like everything was brand new. 
And I started from the very beginning. Every single thing that I learned in church, I threw that all away. And I just opened my book and I went through and went through and went through. By the way, there is nothing like the sound of that. But um, I went through and I learned so much. And the Holy Spirit has led me to so much understanding. And I've this this YouTube channel has been a long time coming. Um, but uh, again, God's timing, not mine. And he he's opened my heart to understanding that this is the time. This is There's no better time than now. And so that's why I'm doing this. Um, another ministry that I want to get involved in eventually is going to be children's ministry. I want to go back into that. Um, but like we've given up pagan holidays um and did you know by the way they aren't teaching this in church there are seven holidays in the bible for us for us believers like beautiful celebrations that are so much fun for us they're not pagan they're for us god said when you enter the land i am going to give you do not do as the pagans do do not worship me the way they worship their gods it's mind blowing, okay? So anyway, that's my testimony. And again, oh, also I had foot pain. I couldn't even walk. It's gone, it's gone. And actually even I had another foot pain come up like a few months ago and it's gone as well after prayer and just waiting on God's timing to heal me. And some people are healed like that. Some people are saved and it just, everything changes like that. And some people, it takes a while to get out of addiction. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Have courage because God is here for you and he's going to get you through it. He's going to change you. He's going to make you a new woman. He's going to make you a new man. He's going to give you understanding. And I want to say like, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to get a lot of messages on this. Oh, well, you know, we're not, we don't live by the law anymore. Jesus didn't come to abolish the law he came to fulfill it through his blood on the cross his finished work on the cross it's what fulfilled means it means finished done done he came to finish it meaning that you accept jesus into your heart and you are saved eternal life you don't have to have to experience the second death you will literally be part of the new earth you will live forever and we are all gonna fall short of the glory we're gonna sin but when we intentionally sin, when we decide, oh, you know what, I don't want to open my heart to this truth because that means I have to change everything. And people are going to judge me. People aren't going to want to be my friend anymore. Boo who? Some of Jesus' friends and followers, some of the people he laid hands on and healed, killed him and watched him die. Okay? I'm, te I'm telling you right now that those things don't matter. The Lord says, pick up your cross and follow me. Do you think it was easy after being whipped half to death and like all that they beaten half to death to carry a cross on your back up a hill to to die in front of people who like I'm not it's just it it's crazy but the thing is is he rose again and we can all be saved through his finished work on that cross and I just want you guys to know that I'm not a stranger I am just not the same person that I used to be and like if God can change my life he can change your life too um, if you're dealing with depression if you're dealing with this uh, um, curse of divorce in your family if you're like if you're dealing with abuse in your home and in your house anger anxiety paranoia drug addiction financial issues like you guys jesus can save you from that there's power in the name of jesus and he can save you from all of it um you don't have to live the way that you're living anymore and there's just there's hope um now my this is a <clears throat> this is a hard video to make, so it's probably all over the place, and I don't know if I got you know got to tell you guys everything I wanted to tell you, but if you stick around on my channel, you're gonna learn a lot more. And 
we are going to be getting into some pretty deep scripture. We are going to be getting into the Old Testament, the New Testament, and we're going to talk about how the Old Testament is a foreshadowing of Jesus. The entire New Testament, the whole Old Testament foreshadowing of Jesus, preparation for Jesus. If you are living your life as a believer already and all you are reading is the New Testament and only going to church and you're not taking the words of the Old Testament like they are written for you as well, then you might want to rethink that. So there's a lot to learn. Um, and I just pray that anyone who watches this video that, you know, you would just really consider, just consider. And uh, yeah. I ask that you all be blessed in the name of Jesus and that you um, that you find all that you've been searching for and that you're here for the next video. Um, I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for watching, guys.